Mike Doe again here at Melco, part of the applications team. Uh, sorry if you watched the live portion of this. We had some technical difficulties. We got them all worked out. So we're doing a recording of this, demonstrating a new tool that Melco has. It's a free tool, um, very useful for you as our customers. So call it a thank you from Melco to you guys. So we appreciate you. The tool um, or the app is called Melco Calculator. Um, and the Melco calculator can be used in several different ways. Um, one way can be uh, to help you plan production. Um, so you can go in and figure out how long each job is going to take you and figure out, okay, tomorrow's work through next week is gonna take me X amount of time and I need to have uh, you know, the machine running for X amount of time, you know, maybe eight hours, 10 hours. Or the other way that it can be used, it can be used to justify um, needing an additional machine. Um, uh, and so it can be used other ways too. You could use it as a estimator on how much uh, time and cost you would have involved in an order when you're trying to make sure that you're profitable on it. So a couple different ways to do that. So let's get to it. Um, I'm gonna take and zoom in here a little bit. Um, so the link for this, we will post in the comments but it is calculator.melcocloud.com. Um, if you haven't been on here yet, uh, there is a simple sign up down below, create a new account, very easy to do. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, you know, give us a shout either in the comments here or you can email us at applications at melco.com. We'd be more than happy to, to help you get set up with an account. I've already got an account, so we're gonna go ahead and sign in. And let me zoom back out for a minute here. Um, so at the top, you will see a couple different uh, options. You've got jobs, machines, and new jobs. Um, and so we'll start with machines. And if you were on earlier with this, um, oh, that's my dictionary. Um, you had seen that I had done a, uh, a Mike's two head. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. And by default, Melco will set up some different uh, options for you, a, a machine one, machine two, machine three, and that machine one is a one head, machine two is a two head. Um, so just so you understand what that stands for, uh, it actually says it right below, but hey, just making sure we communicate here. Um, I'm gonna create a new machine, so we'll do new machine. And once again, we'll call this one Mike's two head. And down here, we will say that it's actually a two head. Um, we would put in, if we're interested in, in you know, financial parts of this, we would put in the uh, investment. So just for sample sake, I'm gonna put in 25,000. Uh, and then you would take and put in this uh, amortization is actually how long um, you wanna see that $25,000 investment on equipment um, just bounced against production to see when it would, you know, when it would be paid off. So uh, I'll leave that at 48. There's a really good defaults in these values. So unless you know you do something different, I would leave it as is. One of those, um, normally my machine's running on average on flats on 1100 stitches a minute. So I would change 1200. You can read. If you ever have a question on them, uh, the nice thing is, is they've put in hints so you can click on it and it actually tells you average time it takes to trim, thread, and to the next. You know, if I'm interested in, um, you know, what the heck is a hoop change, um, I can click on that and it actually gives me descriptors. So it's a very easy, um, very little amount of information to take and use this tool. Um, although here I am uh, telling you about it uh, to try to introduce it, um, uh, it's, it's really cool. So I'm gonna leave all these uh, options alone for now and just create that machine. So once I'm done there, you'll notice that there's a new one down at the bottom, Mike's two head. The next part that I'm going to do is I would create a new job. So I'm gonna click on that. We have two options here. One, we can take and upload um, I believe it's an OFM or a DST, um, and it will grab information from it, 
or I can manually configure. So let's, uh, let's start with uploading a stitch file and we'll just go in and grab one of my designs. Um, maybe to do just something a little bit different. Maybe we'll do theater face. Um, so that will bring it up and it will actually tell you how many stitches are in that design. So let me zoom in a little bit again. I'll make that uh, screen just a little bit larger for you to see. Um, so you'll see the stitch count. You'll see the amount of colors used. So the used colors, if we click on this question mark, that is the amount of used uh, colors per design and how I like to look at that are the unique colors in that design um, and then color changes that's um, boy it's the same exact uh, uh, thing but it really isn't the the color changes is we might have let's say we've got red white and blue and the uh, United States flag if you saw it earlier you saw Scott correct me on that but um, we would sew the blue field down first, maybe we would do the red and white stripes and then come back with white to do stars on top of it. In that case, we would have three used colors, but we would have four color changes in our design. So that's an example of the difference between used colors and colors from design. Um, and then trims in the design, so when this OFM was uploaded, the system actually figured out how many trims are in the design so it knows how to time that out, how timing is going to take. Um, and a cone change, um, in this case, I've already got all the thread on my machine, but if, if in the case you know that you're going to have to change out a couple cones of thread, you would change this out, let's say, to you know, three or four colors. And in this case, I know I've already got the colors on my machine, so I will just say zero, and I will hit continue. In the next portion of this, it wants to know how many of these types of orders are you going to be doing um, and in and, and each one of those orders, how many pieces. So an order is a group of product um, and then the amount of pieces is the amount of product that you would be doing that same design, in this case the theater faces, how many times will you be embroidering that on the machine, okay? Um, the hooping, that's how much time uh, you need to allocate for actually hooping the product. Um, and then garment handling is something like, let's say you've got to take it out of the bag, um, things like that. So those are the times, we'll leave those be for now. Um, if, if we needed to, let's say we're using a topping um, or we're using some of the, um, like the sew uh, applique where it rips out afterwards. So there's some kind of either prep work beforehand or uh, you know, clean up work afterwards, we could build that in using this work before and after job. So once we have that, we'll go ahead and hit calculate. And let me scroll back out here. And in this case, um, you can see all the different machines that are set up, but the one that's most important to me right now and the one that I wanna take and show as set as use is I'm gonna check this box and so what we're seeing up here is how long is it going to take me to create that? So let's get into some detailed calculations for a sec. And so this will tell me that machine setup, so for me to change out any cones of thread, um, you know, get the machines ready for the new product, uh, I've got some time vested in that. And so it tells me that each head is gonna take about a minute and 12 seconds to get, it, get set up and then the amount of stitches during setup. So this may be um, you know, just testing everything out, uh, as well as we have other information in there. But what's important to me is that I see that in total time, including downtime, which downtime would be you know, either the time it takes the machine to trim, move to a new color, the time it takes me to take one hoop off, put a new hoop onto the machine, all those types of things. It's estimating that to do that run of 50 products is gonna take me a little over four hours um, to produce that. So then I could take in Outlook or another calendar, a scheduling calendar, I could take and block off four hours for the theater faces. Um, I hope that makes sense, um, how I would use it uh, in production um, and use it to calculate or forecast uh, my, um, 
you know, my production so that I don't over schedule myself or under schedule my, uh, my production. Um, you can get into a lot more detail than this uh, if you want. Also, if you're like, okay, I, I dig those numbers, but I really am a spreadsheet guy or gal, I want to see this stuff where I can get it into an Excel. I can actually go up here to this export and I can export it out as an Excel um, or an XLS uh, document, or I can just directly print the job if I need to. So if I do the Excel, um, we'll do that real quick and we'll just pop open Excel on my computer. And so then I get the information uh, on what the company settings are um, and then all my types of machines. So if I don't want these once I come in, I can always delete tabs. It works that way, just like any Excel or document would. It's so not a document, Mike, it's a spreadsheet. I get it, but you know what I'm saying. Um, some other things I wanna go back and hit on. Let's go back to jobs for a minute. And so we did the upload a stitch file. If I don't have a file to reference yet, let's say it's, it's off at the digitizing getting done, but I have an estimate on it, I could, I could do, you know, like uh, estimate, and let's just do estimate um, theater face. And I know that you know, approximately 9,000 stitches in this. Uh, did I put 90,000 in there? I did. Um, I believe that there's going to be four colors looking at the artwork the customer has provided me. You get the point on this. I can put in all that information and I, can, and I can calculate off of that just like I did with the uploaded. So you have the ability to do either an uploaded embroidery file that you already have, or if you don't have the file yet, you can do estimates on that. Um, the other thing is, is in the machines, you can always go in and either rename these machines or you can get rid of them. So, you know, like for example, I added my own two head. I can get rid of the one that, uh, um, uh, and I apologize, I forgot about this. You cannot get rid of the ones that Melco sets up for you by default. They're there, you can't remove them. Um, so you can't click on the trash can and delete those, they'll, they'll stay. But you could delete any of the ones that you do. Um, the other way that we could use this uh, tool or this application is, is let's say that we've got a single head. Um, we start out with Melco investment in a single head. Um, and we're starting to get more and more orders um, and we're trying to justify in our own self, does it make sense for me to get a second head? Um, so what we can do is we could use this tool and we could go back and use the theater face. So let's just pull that open. And so if we go from a single head machine to a two head machine, so I'm looking at these numbers down here, you can see that um, on the single head, and let's just bring that up, that my production time um, is going to be a little over eight hours um, and or 10 minutes a piece per garment. Now, if I go to the two head, you can see that uh, my time is actually cut um, in half. And, and that makes sense, right? I mean, logically, if you have two machines, you're gonna be producing twice as much in the same amount of time. But what's interesting is um, not only did we do that, but you can see that um, the amount of time that we have invested in that has gone down as well as the amount of time and cost. So what didn't change, and, and this is the important part, right? The most expensive part of production, um, unless you're just donating your time, is the actual physical labor um, here in the States. You know, your time or your operator's time in the long run is going to cost way more um, uh, than the investment into equipment. So understanding that, you know, if I had enough work um, trying to justify getting more equipment, you can use this tool to say, you know what, my labor doesn't go up in cost. So if we look at, once again, if we look at um, machine one, and we do a detailed calculation and we look at our labor. Give me one second here. Um, our, our labor um, doesn't go up in cost. Um, we're using the same amount of labor. 
But what does go up, um, and so we can see that, give me one second here. Um, so our labor is in here somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. So maintenance per cost, investment. So we see that um, our 1395 is there. Um, and where we can put in our labor costs, let me show that to you because I haven't, is you have the ability over here in these dots to go into uh, company information. And so this will allow you to put in the general cost of your labor. Um, so this is where you can get your labor costs into it. So the tool can be used in multiple ways. Um, once again, I apologize for the live video uh, kind of um, choking on us, had some technical difficulties. I'm, I'm um, happy to say that this video went well and we appreciate your patience on it. Uh, I will also want to mention that on Friday, uh, Samantha will be doing um, design shop talk. So get us uh, email at applications at melco.com. Uh, get us your questions about design shop so that Sam, our expert, resident expert, one of our resident experts can answer those questions for you. The other thing I want to mention is next Monday, Mondays are our digital Mondays. Next Monday, um, Sue and Mary Beth will be doing one on uh, the DTG printer. So tune into those. Um, and in the meantime, if you have any questions, holler at us. We appreciate you being a Melco customer and have a great day.